Bun găsit tuturor! TikTok este una dintre cele mai populare rețele sociale ale momentului. A crescut foarte mult în ultimii ani și are și în România peste 7 milioane de utilizatori. Recent însă a intrat în atenția noastră nu doar pentru că este foarte populară, ci pentru că guvernele mai multor țări, inclusiv din Noua Zeelandă, Australia, Uniunea Europeană sau Statele Unite ale Americii, discută despre interzicerea acestei aplicații, deocamdată cu pași mărunți pe telefoanele celor care lucrează în sectorul public. Ca să înțelegem ce se întâmplă și să aflăm și poziția celor de la TikTok în tot acest pseudo-scandal, l-am invitat pe Iacub Olep, care este Head of Public Policy, politici publice, Central and Eastern Europe. Iacub, hello! Hello, thanks for having us! Um, so, do you think TikTok has a target on its back? Why is it, why is it this all happening? Because uh, there's a saying in Romanian that fum fara foc nu iese, you cannot have smoke without fire. Well, that's a that's a that's a good quote, and uh, I totally agree with it. Um, in a sense that uh, when you are blocking an application, that you should have evidence uh, and facts for it, and this is something that we haven't seen for years now, and this is something that we also haven't seen from the European uh, Commission and their decision regarding banning TikTok of stuff. Devices. This is uh, nothing new when it comes to updating policies on uh, staff devices. But what is uh, kind of unusual for us and, and kind of frustrating for us is the fact that we were not notified by the European Commission. We were not asked additional questions. Um, and we immediately requested a meeting with the European Commission to address those concerns. Uh, we are always ready to chat with the governments to uh, address those concerns which we are already doing with a number of projects uh, regarding data privacy. So this is your role in the company, right? To talk with the officials? Yes, that's correct. Uh, so uh, have there any, uh, been any discussions between you and the Romanian authorities? I know that uh, the Romanian government was looking into this issue. Yes, I know that uh, the Romanian government is doing their own investigation. And I would applaud the Romanian government for that because they look for an evidence They look for facts to see whether TikTok really is a security for uh, is a is a threat for a security, which is not, and they are not just blindly following the European uh, Commission. Because uh, something that you will not find in those decisions of the governments is is facts, is uh, any evidence that TikTok really is a threat. In fact, TikTok is actually ahead of the class in terms of technological companies when it comes to. Uh, data privacy and what we do. We have uh, big projects. One is uh, Project Texas, second is Project Clover, where we invest a lot in data privacy. In US, we spent 1.5 billion US dollars to create a safe ecosystem for data, data with Oracle. Oracle is storing and processing our data, user, US users' data. They, are, um, they also audited our source code, so something that is responsible for Um, uh, for the uh, recommendation system on our platform. And this is, uh, and with Pro Project Clover in Europe, this is exactly what we are doing the same with our European partner, where we, which we will uh, announce um, in the future. Mm, and also, uh, there's this common misunderstanding about TikTok, which is that TikTok is a Chinese company. TikTok is not a Chinese company. TikTok is not available in China. TikTok is owned by Biden's that has its um, headquarters in Singapore. And Biden's is owned in 60% by uh, global uh, investment companies, including the US big uh, investment companies like KKR, CO2, Sequoia Capital, General Atlantic, SoftBank. Um, the board of directors of Biden's are five people. Three of them are US nationals. Only one is Chinese, but he's based in Singapore for a number of years now. So, This is something that we have to address and say very clearly. TikTok is not a Chinese company. But the, there are two main topics that are brought to discussion every time. It's the security uh, issue uh, and the fact that uh, the data of users can be sent to China. Right. How can TikTok be transparent about this and, and show this to the public and the authorities? TikTok data is not being sent to China. TikTok data is being stored currently in the US and in Singapore. Uh, the, the European user data. It will also be very soon stored here in Europe. We've already have two data centers in Ireland. We've also um, started building the third one in Norway. And all the data very soon will be transferring to those data centers in Europe. Also, 
We are compliant with all the regulations, so GDPR, for example, that is existing here in the European Union, or local laws like the Romanian law, or even the voluntary ones like uh, Code of Conduct on so disinformation, for example. We also were one of the first companies to sign it. Uh, but there's uh, an investigation from Forbes from last autumn, I guess, uh, with four employees. I think two of them were from China uh, that were spying on Forbes, two of the Forbes journalists, and two of the employees had access to the data from China. How can this be explained? Right, so, they, uh, so there's also a misconception and misunderstanding here. So this is absolutely unacceptable behavior of those four uh, people. Uh, one, two, one thing to say is that they were not successful because they were actually couldn't obtain the data that they were looking for because we do not have anonymized data on, on people. So you cannot see my no. full name in a Excel no, spreadsheet? No, we, we cannot. We, uh, the only data that we have is aggregated data um, that is used for um, uh, commercial purposes or for improving the experience with an app, right? So if there was someone to uh, investigate you or to, to look, to, to, to check your spot where you are, it would not be possible. This is why they were also unsuccessful. Two, they were immediately uh, fired from the company. They are no longer with the company. Uh, three, our policies were updated immediately afterwards. So it would even make harder for this sort of um, uh, uh, behavior uh, in the company. And four, as soon as we learned it, uh, we wanted to be transparent with the public. So as soon as we learned all the details about this situation, we put it out there in the public. We informed the, the public about the situation, what happened internally in our company. And why do you think you are so looked? Uh, why, why do you think you have this target on the back? Why, why is everyone looking at TikTok? I think TikTok has become a, sort of a geopolitical football. Um, we, we live in, a, in an environment that is highly competitive. One, and two, there is uh, a geopolitical, geopolitical shift uh, around the world right now. And we are new kid on the block, and we have uh, Chinese origins, right? Because our uh, founder was in China. We are far from it now, because we are not a Chinese company anymore. But yeah, we, we, are, being, um, uh, we are being perceived as, as a company that started in China. And what can, what can you do to change this perception? If, if TikTok is... Uh, is clear of everything. How can you make sure for the regular user, not the politician, that TikTok is safe? Um, so this is what we this is what we do. We will be constantly uh, talking about it and, and explaining exactly how uh, our safety system works, how our data flow works, and the fact that is that is that it is not going to China. Uh, we will improve um, all the policies that are necessary. We will inform about how the content moderation works uh, for, for the people and, and, uh, and publish those results in data centers. So every user right now can uh, access our safety center. Just put tic online TikTok safety center and you have a number of reports there. You have reports on safety that are quarterly that will tell you how do we work on content moderation, what sort of content is being taken down, uh, what is the number of misinformation on the platform, also, the requests from the government. So if there are requests from the governments uh, f uh, directed to us, uh, for, for example, for taking a certain content, uh, then we, of course, assess it internally, whether it's uh, okay with our community guidelines. But then it all lands at the end in the report that you as a user can see it at the, at the end of the day. There's another discussion about, so you have cybersecurity, uh, we have monitoring, uh, which you talked about, but also the U.S. Uh, officials also said a lot about TikTok addiction and that it can ma manipulate kids and it can also spread a lot of fake news. What, the, what is the company doing uh, for this? So the safety of our users is a top priority for us. It's, it's an absolute key. And how do we um, uh, tackle this is on, on three levels. One is the community guidelines, which is a sort of a constitution of the platform where we say what is allowed, what is not. So any behavior that is related with violence, misinformation, disinformation, any harmful content is not allowed on the platform. That's one. Second, we uh, invest heavily in content moderation. Content moderation works both on mechanical level and a human level. Um, we work with uh, independent organizations like uh, fact-checking organizations or um, uh, organizations that, that, um, uh, that uh, are about safety and that uh, are our trusted pluggers. So, for example, that when they see um, 
and dangerous trend on the platform that you can report to us and we can react really quickly. And three, we also believe in an education of our users and this is something that we do either by our features and tools within the app or externally with our partners like NGOs and, um, and other organizations like that. The For You page was um, seen as a, a little bit controversial because it can show you the content you might like and it drags you like a, a black hole. How does the algorithm work? How mm -hmm. does it know uh, about my tastes? Yeah. Right. So the content moderation works basically on, uh, uh, on from the very first, from the very start. So when you uh, open the app, it asks you about your interests. So you put several interests that are interesting for you. Um, then when you start interacting with the content, so this is um, this is a different be difference between the how the internet worked before and how it worked with TikTok, which was a social graph before that you've seen kind of uh, the content that was your group surrounded around you interacting with. And now there is a switch to content um, graph, which is entirely about how you interact with the content. So the community that is surrounding you is not that important uh, on TikTok. So you have your interest, then you interact with the content. So you can uh, like the content, you can watch it a few times, you can comment it. And based on that, the algorithm uh, shows you the, uh, the, the, the next content that, is, um, that you are going to see. Also, there, there is a content from people that have similar interests to you that will be proposed to you as well. And the, 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 the videos that you see on the platform, they are coming in packages. Usually it's like seven, five to seven videos in a package. Five of them are within your interests or uh, the people that have similar interests with you. And two of them are usually completely out of the blue. And this is something that we do in order for you to be able to explore uh, what's, what's, uh, what, what's else on the platform and also to avoid rabbit holes that we know from, uh, from other social media. Um, I know that the Chinese version of the, uh, the, the Chinese twin uh, of TikTok um, has a technology for face recognition and object recognition for sh shopping and so on. Does the TikTok uh, we are using have, have this sort of technology, like face recognition? And yeah, this is another misconception about TikTok in terms of what sort of data uh, we collect. We do not uh, have face recognition at TikTok. I cannot uh, tell you more about, uh, about uh, Toteo, which is a completely different product on Chinese market, right? So the way to think about it is you, you, you cannot think about it as a TikTok equivalent on a Chinese market. You need to think about it as a completely different product, right? So Biden's as a owner of certain products and apps, they have plenty of those. And TikTok is one of it, which is, for, uh, which is, which is here and which is not available in China, while Toutiao is a completely different project that is available in China. And they have completely different set of uh, also the data that they collect. But yeah, in terms of face recognition, no, we don't do it on TikTok. Um, I am Marian Andrei. I have a TikTok um, uh, account. What that, what kind of information does TikTok have about me or, or can collect about me or so, certain user? Yes, so very basic data as any other platform out there. Actually, uh, you don't even have to give your uh, a real name to start a TikTok account, right? So, so this is to, to give you a perspective on, on what data do we, do we collect. But the, the basically the, the data that we collect are the commercial data. So, um, so in order to, to present you the ads better and so we can target the ads better with our uh, partners, business partners. And second is to improve your experience with an app. So this is basically those two, uh, two groups of data that we collect. And everything that we collect, you can, um, you can find in our terms of use. And when you compare those terms of use with other platforms, you would see that there is nothing uh, unusual there. Do you see similarities between what is happening to TikTok now with what happened with Huawei three or four years ago? I cannot comment on, uh, on other companies. Uh, but I think we are quite clear uh, in our messaging that we are not a Chinese company. Uh, and f from what I know, I think uh, it's a massive difference uh, here. Okay, so that also means that the rule that says that uh, Chinese companies have to give data to China doesn't apply to you. Yes, that's correct. Because the, the rule that, uh, I think we're, we're talking about the golden share rule. So the fact that if uh, a company is incorporated in China, they, that the Chinese government have a, a golden share rule in those companies, 
and this is the way that they can get access to data, etc., or have an influence on the company. But this relates to Chinese companies that are based in China. TikTok is not available in China, it's so it's not based in China. That's why it's does, it does not relate to TikTok. Uh, can you explain TikTok's data storage and sharing practices, uh, particularly with third parties entities? Because yeah, I know there are some extra cookies uh, in the apps, like for Google and so on, and government agencies. Because I know like social networks in general, they do have a close relationship with the governments right. in certain countries. Right. How do you? So, for example, with the, with the government, the way that we work is um, there are certain aspects of safety where they can, for example, contact us uh, and ask for removal of some content because they think it's misinformation or, or harmful. So what happens then? It is being assessed by our trust and safety team. They check whether it's legit with our uh, community guidelines and terms of use. Uh, and based on that, they're making the decision whether we are taking down the content or the account or not. And every every uh, every th this, this kind of uh, interaction is always put in the report later on, quarterly, that is uh, accessible at uh, TikTok Safety Center, and you can see exactly um, the way that we, that, that, that we work here. And with third-party entities? And with third-party entities, it works uh, very uh, similarly. So uh, whether there is any form of contact between us and them, it's also uh, put in the, in the report, and this is also happening based on the current rules and, and good practices that are um, in the industry. Jacob Oleb, uh, Head of Public Policy, uh, Central and Eastern Europe, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having us.